So, you have a show for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called Tiger King. Oh, changing the cat species so Disney can't sue us. That's smart. Hey, maybe Pumbaa could be a teacup <laughs> pig. No, it's actually not a Lion King ripoff. <laughs> oh, okay, so is this about that Tekken character? Because I'm pretty sure that's a jaguar man. <laughs> so this is actually a documentary series about a pretty guy that sure. owns a bunch of tigers. Yeah, I don't know about that. Documentaries are kind of boring. Sometimes they try to teach you things. <laughs> well, this one has big cats, murder, drug kingpins, hitmen, a presidential campaign, accidental death, tigers eating people, color guns, explosions, and garbage meat. All right, I'm listening. <laughs> Great, so this show follows a guy called Joe Exotic, right? Oh, and what's he like? He's like if Michael Keaton entered the witness protection program and did a bunch of hard drugs along the way. Oh, my God. Yeah, he has <laughs> just a bunch of tigers and exotic animals. Very uh, cool. And he exploits them for money and breeds them and rips the babies away from their mothers at birth. Oh, uh, I would just love to retract the very cool I just threw out there. <laughs> uh, I'll allow it, sir. Very so this guy cool. runs a zoo with a bunch of employees and several husbands. <laughs> How does he attract multiple husbands? Oh, meth. Oh, yeah. They like meth, he gives them meth. Well, okay then, geez. What about the employees? Does he treat the employees well? Well, pretty well, I guess. He lets them grab whatever expired meat they want from garbage bins he gets from Walmart. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, no, that's pretty nice. <laughs> he also serves that expired meat to the tigers and to guests who order pizza. Oh, uh, secret garbage pizza. Also, one of the employees gets their arm bitten off by a tiger. Oh, oh so I imagine yeah, we spend a lot of time up. on that, huh? A couple of episodes? No. no, just a couple of minutes. It's barely worth mentioning, to be honest, in comparison to all the other stuff in here. It's not. So, Joe, also sells tigers for like two, three, four thousand dollars a pop. Oh, surprisingly affordable tigers are tight. <laughs> nope, they're not actually. Not an okay thing to buy. Oh, okay. Whoop, whoopsie. And Joe Exotic also has several albums and music videos. Oh, he's a singer. Not really, no. Oh, the songs don't sound good. No, his voice sounds like this when he's talking, and these songs actually have like a deep, low, soothing voice. They were actually recorded by these guys Vince Johnson and Danny Clinton. And so what are the songs about? Mostly tigers. That makes sense. But one of them is actually a diss track about his nemesis. Oh, he has a nemesis? Who's his nemesis? Carol Baskin. She's mad at Joe for keeping tigers in cages and making money off of it. And what does she do? She keeps tigers in cages and makes money off of it. Oh, she does? Yeah, but she also really pushes for him to stop breeding them and letting people pet the cubs. So I guess she's supposed to be the one we're rooting for in all this, right? Well, she probably fed her husband to some tigers, so I don't know about that. Oh. What? He was a multi-millionaire and she changed his will right before he disappeared to include the word disappearance. Oh, very suspicious. She also says in an interview that if you want a tiger to eat someone, you should cover them in sardine oil. Oh, very, very, very <laughs> suspicious. Yeah, so she probably did that. Anyway, her and Joe get into this big legal battle, and she pretty much takes everything from him. Well, it's gonna be tough for Joe Exotic to stay in business after that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? You see, this guy Jeff Lowe swoops in to help Joe out financially. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and what's shady, Jeff's shady, deal? Shady. No, it's Jeff Lowe. You gotta say his full name every time. Why? I don't know, but that's what everybody does. Okay, so what's Jeff Lowe's deal? Well, he kind of looks like if instead of developing a passion for filmmaking, James Cameron developed a passion for dressing up like a bully from a 90s teen movie. Okay, and what does he do? Well, he's pretty much a con artist pretending to be richer than he actually yes. is, and he carries around baby tigers in bags to try to lure women into his hotel rooms in Vegas. Okay, 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 so this guy also sounds awful, yes. and I'm very unclear on who I'm supposed to be rooting for. <laughs> oh, I don't recommend doing that. Don't root for, for anyone. Someone? Yeah, not a good idea. No one. one of the most relatable guys is a former drug lord who may or may not have been the inspiration for the movie Scarface. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this show is so crazy that this guy tells the story about how he was present while one of his guys cut up a federal agent, and you're like, well, at least this guy's on it. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so Jeff Lowe really starts to turn on Joe Exotic during the presidential campaign. His what? Oh yeah, Joe Exotic <laughs> runs for president. His campaign manager is the guy who sold him ammo at Walmart. Okay, I thought you said this was a documentary, but a whole lot of this is clearly made up. <laughs> it's not made up. It just takes place in rural Oklahoma and Florida. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. That explains it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, I just, guess that pretty much like covers that. it, huh? Actually, I feel like I've covered only 5% of mm. it. I didn't even touch upon the guy who looks like if Tim Robbins started a cult. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, how does the whole thing end? Well, eventually, Joe hires Jeff Lowe's right-hand man to go murder <laughs> Carol Baskin, and then Joe goes to jail. Uh, what? Did the guy do it? Nope, but he took the money for it. And he doesn't go to jail? No. Yeah. Are the tigers okay? I don't know. Probably not. Do you think it's a little weird that we're going to profit off of people profiting off of animal abuse. Uh, no, I think because we're like an extra step removed from the animal abuse, we're actually okay and our profit's cool. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, because I gotta be honest, I feel like pretty much all the people you mentioned should probably be in yes. jail. Well, a lot of these people have been in jail or, you know, will go to jail. I mean, it sounds like Carol Baskin's doing just fine, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. They have pretty much closed that case. I don't really see them looking into that any further. <laughs>
where the quarantine masses cry out for entertainment, Netflix will save us with the perfect distraction for our troubled times. <laughs> Even though it's dumb luck we got stuck at home now instead of last month, or we'd all be bonding over how dumb the goop lab is. We're coming up against some limitations of, of the matter to matter kind of healing, where you do physical to work on the physical. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Tiger King. <laughs> Experience the ultimate example of timing is everything in this true crime doc that replaces all your fear, boredom, and isolation with a group of zookeepers who will shock, delight, and confuse you with every other sentence. They burned up seven of my crocodiles. I had bought a lemur with bogus paperwork. I once saw a guy get his finger bit off by a bear outside my office window. I'd like to introduce my wife, but my husband's at home feeding my brand new baby kangaroo. In this series, that's one part Cohen brother's crime story. Would you actually grind your <laughs> husband up, feed him to the tiger so there's no evidence? And I guess that was your accomplice in the wood chipper. One part just <laughs> for guest movie. We got honey, we got barbecue sauce, skin cream, political condoms. These <laughs> are my personalized hand towels. These have been selling pretty well. And one part <laughs> snuff film. And he said, oh man, this is a Ruger. You know a Ruger won't fire without a clip. But since it is real, yeah. we have to grapple with the fact that we're all laughing at, if not outright celebrating, a bunch of broken people mm. hurting each other and their animals. And those cats trusted me, and so they could look me in the eye when they died. Ooh, can we grapple with that after the pandemic? Mm -hmm. I know, I just want to hee-haw at some yahoos. I saw a tiger, <laughs> saw me. <laughs> he thinks he's people. <laughs> Want to get into the exotic animal game? There's a few rules you gotta follow. One, you gotta be a polygamist. Wait, what? <laughs> Travis could be in a Wait, what? With us too. Dr. Antel oh, has four or five wives. Him and Lauren Swain, they use the tigers to entice them in. Two, you gotta be extremely paranoid because everyone's out to get you. Mm. He was already a paranoid person. What do you carry that gun for? People. We put in security cameras, kept guns by the bed. No, for real. We found a microphone and antenna top of the gift shop roof. I could tell it was a listening mm -hmm. device. And three, make sure all of this zoo stuff is just a stepping stone to launch your media career. <laughs> hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Here, look at me how young I am there on Letterman. Man. Leading this herd <laughs> of cat folk is Joe Exotic, a zoo owner who oh looks like you goodness. hit randomize on the Fallout character. <laughs> where even the basic facts of his life sound like the last thing the AI would spit out before it crashes. The gay gun cane redneck with a mullet. He's locked in a life and death struggle with literal Catwoman, Carol Baskin, <laughs> an animal rights activist who used to sell exotic animal cubs. Throughout this tape, we'll show you how we take them from the mother. And now uses the veneer of a charity to obscure the line between zoo and sanctuary. And also probably maybe sort of killed her husband. <laughs> the lady also, who runs. Maybe sort of. Killed her own husband, potentially. <laughs> her husband disappeared. Supposedly buried in their property. I promise you, he's underneath that septic tank. Crazy. Look at her eyes! She's totally right! <laughs> so suit up for the documentary event that took the genre from true crime to holy sh no way that's true. Right. Crime that was smart enough to give you just enough Joe Exotic to keep him compelling. Because as anyone in show business will tell you, never go full Joe Exotic. <laughs> and marks the beginning, not the end, of the biggest thing to happen to tigers since zoo books. Because A-listers are rushing to play Joe. <laughs> Spin-off series are already on their way. And you just know oh Joe Exotic goodness. is gonna get pardoned by the president. I'm sure there's a job waiting for him at the EPA. Guess what, mother <laughs> Starring. <laughs> Joe's crack team of employees. <laughs> I'm working with people that just got out of prison. I found this place on Craigslist. Travis was a pothead from hell. Kept me sober, not drinking. First guy to the zoo, I didn't really know anything about the zoo. I worked at the ammo section. When I got the job offer <laughs> to work for Joe, I was like, what's the job? He said campaign manager. <laughs> meat talk. There's only five buckets of meat in there. Meat to do the wolves. Most of the meat was from the Walmart truck. Expired meat, mm -hmm. and that's what they ate. Getting interviewed while Crazy. holding an animal. I'd like to introduce my friend today. We have tigers. Joe supplied tigers. We breed them. 28 species. The guy that got killed by the lions. <laughs> that's the way it was. <laughs> oh, little girl. <laughs> Threatening to kill people. If somebody thinks they're gonna walk in here and take my animals away, it's gonna be a small Waco. He was talking about dropping your name. You can guarantee God damn tell you I'm gonna put a cap in your ass. Somebody needs to kill the bitch. You will stop breathing. I'm gonna cut her fing head off. And then I'm gonna put a bullet right between your fing eyes. Me and Joe made a pact. If anything went bad, we were gonna shoot each other. Going broke. I don't own anything. This bus is not mine. 
Those cars are not mine. Joe maxed out all the credit cards. They had Joe against the ropes because he was broke. Jeff Lowe doesn't have no money. Mom ran out of money. It's time to somebody as broke as me and you get in there. God. I'm broke as <laughs> Employee abuse. He pays the staff $150 a week. $100 a week. $100. I don't pay anybody to do animal care. <laughs> animal abuse. He puts tigers who've aged out of playtime events in a gas chamber. Snake and cubs in the hotel. Counts mm. three through seven are for shooting and killing five tigers. Fashion abuse. How many affliction t-shirts do you Man. want? 60 or 70. Carol laughing at something she just said. He's gonna get nasty with me. <laughs> Dang near shot the neighbor's dog. <laughs> I picked up the gun, held it on him. <laughs> if someone were to kill me, I think it would push this movement so far forward that it would be worth it. Back <laughs> picture I see people? Oh, that's a bummer. Logan Paul? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <gasps> No! <laughs> no! The thin line between exotic animal lover and cult leader. They were virgins or close to virgins. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to get to the top, they should sleep with him. He's got his little cult and I got my little cult. The thin line Jeez. between exotic animal lover and drug dealer. Joe kept him pumped full of weed. I sold drugs to maintain my animal habit. Open up the snakes, stick bags of cocaine inside of them, mm -hmm. stitch them back up. We call it meth mouth. The thin line between exotic animal lover and exotic animal lover. <laughs> little <laughs> gets you a lot of <laughs> Who are you, sexy beast? You're muddy, my sexy tiger. Let's see your foot, sexy lion. Come here, love me. Come here, love me. And <laughs> payback. <laughs> I've been doing this 20 years, never even been fit. <laughs> Bonding with them or you of us? Ooh. Ow, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that part was actually yeah, pretty I'm funny. Good. Oh, that part was crazy. Uh, that was nuts. Gone. We do not have time to wait. And mm. we're gonna financially recover from this. Mm -hmm. Animal crackers. <laughs> oh man. When they ask how I'd like to be remembered when I'm gone, I don't have an answer except to say. Not like this. <laughs> and if I was sitting there concentrating their shoulders out too on the computer and come and rub them balls in my face. <laughs> and then I'd go nuggets to that boy. All right, guys. Tiger King was nuts. Let's just be honest. It was absolutely nuts. I started watching the first episode maybe like back when it first came out and I just I couldn't really get through it. I was like, eh, no, I'm, I'm done with this. Then I saw there was an honest trailer and a pitch meeting. I was like, all right, let me catch it first because I want to normally watch the show or movie before I watch the pitch meeting or honest trailer normally. I know that wasn't the case with Twilight. I watched the pitch meetings for all those first and I just, I said, you know what? Now I'll watch the movie. Now I've got more of an appreciation for the comedy of it because it's just hilarious. Still got to do the honest trailers for those. So let me know if you want me to do that. But this show was ridiculous. It was crazy. It was hard to watch in a lot of cases because these guys are just horrible. Every, all, every one of them. Joe, Carol, Jeff, all of them. Even the, even the guy that was the FBI informant. They pretty much got everybody in trouble. He was like one of the worst. It was just a really weird show. The one thing I did like about the show or the documentary is that it felt like a movie. It can easily be translated or adapted into a film. Now, I want to say I heard that Nicolas Cage is supposed to be playing Joe Exotic in the movie, which I'm not sure if it's a Netflix movie or if it's going to be something actually in theaters. That's going to be interesting too, because I want to see if he changes his voice and all that kind of stuff. Unless there's somebody else cast, let me know. But that's going to be interesting. So the fact that all this stuff happened is nuts. And it did come out at the right time. I think if this came out and there was no pandemic, it probably would have been swept under the rug and then maybe become a cult favorite later on. I didn't really enjoy it though. Like, like watching it, it just felt like a little bit of a chore getting through it. Cause I wanted to watch it so I could make sure I, I fully understood what was going on with these these videos. I had heard about all the Carol Baskin stuff. I didn't know the particulars. The guy they were showing in the documentary was her husband that was killed, but I didn't know that she was married before this guy and married before that. Like it was just all this crazy stuff. But I liked how they put it together, so it felt like a film. I just didn't care for anybody in this thing. <laughs> And I didn't know, like like Ryan George says in his pitch meeting, who do I root for? Do I root for anybody? And the writer guy's like, nope, it's just safe to say you just shouldn't do that because these are all horrible, horrible people. So did you watch Tiger King on Netflix? Let me know. What were your thoughts on it? Is there any information that was kept out that maybe I'm not aware of or wasn't in the documentary itself? What do you know about this show? What do you know about the people involved? Also, let me know what you think of the Honest trailer and the pitch meeting. I like both because both go through the show 
very well actually as far as the details and they know what to make fun of and what to kind of not touch on. I like how Ryan George though talked about is this going to mess up with our profits seeing how we are benefiting or profiting from animal abuse so like how does that play so I thought both did very very well it's really tough for me to choose which one I would say was better because I had a big laugh on both so I, I enjoyed them both let me know what you guys think I'll put a poll out uh, so you can guys let me know which one you vote for. Pretty sure Pitch Mini is going to win. I just don't know how that goes. But uh, I still have fun with these. And I like to see you guys still participate and still vote. I appreciate it. Check out some of our other most popular videos on this channel. We've got a number of them that are still growing. Because you guys are watching a lot of these. So I really appreciate that. It's really helping out the channel. And check out one of our most recent reactions right over there. Overall, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. I hope you guys have a great day. And you guys keep smiling.